Good evening, everybody, and uh, welcome to the uh, planning committee meeting on the 7th of February uh, 2023. Um, before we start the agenda, I would just like to say um, a big thank you to Councillor Simon Goodall for stepping in at the last at the, at the last planning meeting. Um, at the last minute to be chair, he did a, an exemplary job. Um, it was a challenging situation for me to get back, and it was a it was a last minute call, and, and he was there. So, uh, yeah, thank you very much, Councillor Goodall. Thank you. So, uh, moving on to the agenda, uh, are there any apologies for absence? The only one I have received so far is from Councillor Daniels. Do we have any others? I think we're all here apart from. Okay, moving on to uh, the second item of the agenda. Are there any declarations of interest for tonight's uh, applications? Take silence as golden. Um, and can I also um, ask that the minutes of the previous meeting are moving a seconder so that there are a true reflection? Mover, Councillor Simon Goodall, seconder. Oh, okay. All right, let's scrap that. They'll be at the next meeting, sorry. Okay, so uh, without further ado, then we can move on to the first one of, of tonight's. Um, Applications for consideration, and that is 0206-2021, One Bone Hill Road, Tamworth. And that is a full application for the demolition of existing buildings, construction of 11 number of dwellings, and associated parking and access. So without further ado, I'll move over to uh, Glenn to present the slides. Thank you, Chair. Um, just as a point of reference, uh, some report amendments. Um, 6.4.1 and 6.4.2, um, please delete, well, ignore reference to this. This was a error on our behalf, so they, uh, just ignore that as part of the report. Um, condition 6 refers to Condition 1. Uh, that's an error again. That should refer to Condition 5. It was just the way the Fuel Authority reported on their conditions. And on 6.9.2, we do um, fail to put the civil contribution, and I can confirm that will be £36,610. And one final point, uh, another condition will be included for the requirement of boundary treatments for the development to be submitted prior to development starting on site. So in terms of consideration, this is a former co-op garage site which has been vacant for a number of years. It's situated at the end of Lady Bridge and adjacent to the river of the castle grounds beyond and views to the castle itself with open space floodplain to the north and existing housing at Highbroom Court to the south. Directly adjacent to the site is a site under construction for nine dwellings. Um, I've got a reference to that here on the slides. You can see how this scheme would relate to that approved proposal that is, I say, currently under construction. The scheme has had a few revisions um, to the houses, um, to apartments, and now down to 11 houses shown on the layout, which is there. Each, have, each, par each house will have two parking spaces, and there's also a larger corner property as well. Elevations, uh, two-storey, uh, with dormers in the roofs and brick and tile uh, materials, all of which will be conditioned to be submitted prior to development starting. So in principle, we have a housing scheme here which is acceptable in principle. Again, it is an allocated site. Um, on this slide here, I show you the allocation uh, within the local plan, um, subject to various requirements which we believe have been met through this consideration of this application. It's also a brownfield site, so again, very much in the favour of um, within the PPF in terms of reusing the most uh, sustainable land and being in a sustainable location. Local plan policy G and HG4 states that two units would need to be affordable. However, the applicant has provided a viability assessment due to contamination on the site, but obviously being a previous garage. Um, and as in light of the assessment made, they deem that they are not able to provide the affordable units. Said viability assessment was then given to the district valuation office, who did confirm that that is indeed correct. That the viability means that the affordable, yeah, they weren't have had to afford the affordable units, and therefore there is no requirement for this on this application, which is a, a deemed method of doing this through the local plan, and therefore is deemed acceptable as part of NH, the HG4. The proposal also would fail slightly to accord with the mix of development, um, eight of them being three bedroom units. However, identify that these are a small unit um, number that we do need in the Tamworth district. Therefore, on balance, we feel that this policy has been met with this requirement. Okay. 
So therefore, we have an application here that is considered to be accepted in policy terms. With regards to other considerations, we looked obviously the design of the proposals and deemed it to be satisfactory. The layout, as you've seen, is quite. Um, oh, sorry, I'll go back to the layout on the slide. Uh, yeah, the layout. I'm sorry, technology's failing me here. There we go. Yep. So the layout um, seems to be acceptable owing to the you know quite tight constrained nature of the uh, development proposal. Um, we've also got housing types which are um, reflective of the local area and proportionate, etc. They provide good amenity space, garden provide garden spaces, distance boundaries, etc. All are in conformity with the SPD. And the street scene again is acceptable. The heritage matters have been considered as well, being quite close to um, heritage assets and obviously views towards the castle. Conservation officer has deemed them to be acceptable and in conformity with NPPF and policy EN6. The flooding, um, obviously it's not very close to the River Tame and floodplain uh, issues. The lead local flood authority have examined all the published work and uh, reports submitted. There was a bit of tweaking that need to go on in fact part of the application determination, but they're now in position to approve the application subject to conditions, which again are stipulated on the report. If you wish to see how they will be um, brought forward, then obviously that will be part of future conditions that will be discharged with the um, with authority giving their approval. With biodiversity net gain, um, obviously we're located on the Brownfield site where there's unlikely to be um, a, you know, a plethora of wildlife um, on site. But there are a number of measures which are stipulated in the ecology report, uh, 12 in all, which hopefully will aid to provide some net gain, including bird and bax boxes, which we'd like to see as part of, again, conditions on the application. And um, therefore, we have a, an application here which is acceptable in principle on an allocated housing site. It's on a brownfield site as well, so we will clean up that land into a, a hopefully reasonable, you know, usable site for future housing in Tamworth. Drainage, highway matters have all been addressed and uh, acceptable subject to final agreement of conditions, and therefore the application is to be acceptable and um, deemed to be acceptable with the policies of the Tamworth local plan and the NPPF subject to approval with a section 106 for um, education contributions and a seal payment as well. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Glenn. Uh, there are no speakers for this application tonight, so we'll move straight on to questions, please. Do any of the members have questions? Uh, Councillor Thurgood. Thank you, Chair. Um, with the application, it's referred to as One Bone Hill Road. Are you aware that there is a One Bone Hill Road at the termination of Dunstall Lane, um, just on the other side of the island by Pickering's? Um, no, thanks for the information. I this is just a historic record that I think we've um, have treated the application to. Um, so, yeah. So, will that be changed, Glenn? Uh, I mean, yes, I mean, we can look at the, where it's changed to. Obviously, the site plan references the clear identification of the site. Um, but, yes, if there's a yeah, another one hill bone road, we can look at that um, as part of the uh, final decision notice when it goes out. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you for bringing that to the officer's attention. What we're just checking is how the application has been publicised. Because um, uh, if you're saying there's already one Burnhill Road, and this has been advertised as the site of one Burnhill Road, we're just checking whether that could have caused any, um, uh, there's any impact on the publicity requirements. Thank you, Chair. Um, can I can I just ask the officer to, to can you can you just give some clarification about how this Bone Hill Road relates to the other one Bone Hill Road? Um, originally, before the um, Sainsbury's Island was built and the bridge over the River Tame, 
uh, Bone Hill Road started um, or finished at the co-op garage, but it then flowed through to just behind the, um, the where the old Argus was on the other side of the A453. Uh, there's a small turning there that actually goes down and round to Pickering's and then leads into the old Dunstall Lane that used to lead through to um, Hopworth and is now through to Dunstall Park. Um, but on that um, on that area, um, there's quite a sharp um, sharp turning back, and I, I spent ages looking at one Bone Hill Road, thinking, well, where are they going to fit 11 houses? Um, so a bit, bit confusing, I found it anyway. But I thought it should be uh, brought to, you, to your notice. If you go on. Um, Google Maps Street View um, outside the number one Dunstall, uh, number one Bonehill Road, and zoom in. You can actually see number one on the house. It's a semi-detached house. Can I? Can I just give you? Can I just give you some advice, Chair and Glenn? Just make the point that um, if the member's been confused about how has this been advertised as one Bone Hill Road in the paper and in notices to people, and if there is two one Bone Hill Roads, could someone have mistaken the adverts for this and the publicity for this for the other Bone Hill Road? I mean, the first thing to ask is: Is there two Bone Hill Roads? That this is. The, Asking a question, I don't know. Sorry. Yeah, yeah I think we're going to have to take some more, uh, take, take this away, aren't we, and uh, do a bit more research as to see whether there are two Bone Hill uh, roads or whether there is one Bone Hill road or whether there's two ones or one one. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Um, the point here is, members and Chair, that um, this has been advertised and people have, have been consulted on the basis that this is one Bonehill Road. Now, if the member, uh, the members, the councillor has just mentioned that, to his knowledge, there is another site called one Bonehill Road in the area, and it, it raised confusion in his mind. He, he didn't know whether this application was for that Bonehill Road or for this Bonehill Road. It's, it's not really clear whether some, some other person might have got equally confused and wanted to um, make comments or put an objection in or a supporting comment um, and got confused over the, over the site address and where this application is. Um, so I, my advice was that if, there, if that confusion could arise um, and someone would have lost the opportunity to put a consultation comment in or there was a confusion about any other consultation comments, then this could lead any... Um, any subsequent decision of the authority is subject to challenge, but there is chair, there is a member. So I would suggest, I would advise members that this is this is deferred for this to be clarified. Um, but there, chair, there is a, a member. Councillor Maycock. Yeah, I was just going to agree with that. That um, in in light of of what's just been said, I think it needs to be stayed over and uh, a bit of research done into it uh, and if there is two bone hills then possibly consultation has to go back through again. Uh, just uh. Thank you, thanks Councillor Maycock. Um, Councillor uh, Goodall? Yeah I think based on the information we've, we've got I think I'll formally move to defer Thank you. So we have a mover to defer. Second, Councillor Thurgood. Thank you. So we uh, move on to the uh, next application, which is uh, application 0324. Uh, slash 2022 erection of a two bedroom detached dwelling and this is a resubmission of a 0013 over to uh, Glenn for the slides thank you apologies that's Andrew thank you chair um, 
Application 0324 um, is uh, for the erection of a two-bedroom detached dwelling at uh, uh, the garden area of uh, number 96 uh, Greenheart in uh, Amington. Uh, the uh, proposal was originally submitted um, under that um, application number as a three-bedroom dwelling, um, but over the evolution of the proposal it has reduced um, with changes requested of the application um, to uh, a two-bedroom dwelling. Uh, to give a little bit of context to um, the application itself, there was a, originally an application submitted um, in early 2022 for a three-bedroom dwelling on that same site um, that was subsequently refused um, at uh, delegated level. Um, the applicant uh, revisited the proposals and came back with um, a new application uh, which had um, taken on board the reasons for refusal of the, uh, the first application. The, uh, the proposed application um, that you see in front of you today is, uh, as you can see on the, um, uh, the images there, is for a, um, a detached dwelling to the rear of uh, the existing 95 and 96 Greenheart um, which it would sit perpendicular to um, and the proposed dwelling would sit alongside the existing number 97 Greenheart uh, which as you look at the image there you can just see the outline of that property to the left of the, uh, the proposed dwelling. The, uh, the proposal also included the, um, uh, the creation of two off-street parking spaces for the existing number 96 Greenheart um, which currently does not benefit from um, such spaces. The, uh, Glenn, would you like to move on to the next slide, please? We've, we've shot straight through there. That's it, thank you. Yep. Uh, the proposal, as you can see, um, is for um, a uh, detached dwelling with a um, pitched roof, um, full width uh, canopy uh, above the or porch canopy above the, the door um, and uh, the, um, the, the ground floor window. To the rear, you've got a French window into the rear garden um, and above uh, that, uh, one bedroom window and one bathroom window. At first floor level to the front, um, there are the two windows um, across the frontage there, which are both for the, um, uh, the main bedroom. Do you like to move on to the floor plan? Thank you. So uh, <coughs> here we can see the, um, the floor plan um, for the uh, proposal. Um, so lounge to the front, um, kitchen and dining room area to the rear, uh, the two bedrooms and, and bathroom um, at... Um, first floor level. The proposal, as I say, has evolved quite significantly since it was originally submitted back in July of last year and um, various changes were made to it to make it um, more acceptable um, within the, um, the site proposed, um, which resulted in um, changes to uh, the, um, uh, the width and the, um, the depth of the house um, and as you can see from this what we, we actually have now in the proposal is um, a garden area that um, is divided up in such a way as to maximise the, um, the space for the proposed new dwelling whilst leaving uh, reasonable uh, garden areas for the uh, two existing properties all of which are in the same ownership. The, um, one of the big differences between uh, the uh, previous application that was refused uh, and what we have now is that this application shows the um, orientation of uh, the proposed dwelling to be um, in the same orientation as um, number 97 and 90, um, 98 Greenhall, um, the adjacent houses to it. The, um, the footprint of it also is such that in respect to um, 97 Greenheart, um, the, uh, the building line to the front is common to that house um, and also the, um, the rear elevation is common, 
whereas with the original scheme submitted early last year, um, the proposed dwelling was on a slightly different orientation, angled slightly differently to the neighbouring house, um, and extending um, by some two metres or so forward of the building line at 97 Greenheart. The um, initial consultation process um, resulted in a, in, um, a total of uh, approximately 30 um, objections from neighbours um, on Greenheart. The, um, the reasons for objecting um, were largely due, due to um, concerns over parking and traffic generation. Um, the um, proximity to uh, a nearby school was referenced um, by many of those objectors um, who suggested that additional um, traffic on Greenheart in light of the, um, the school activity um, wouldn't um, be acceptable. Uh, other uh, issues raised in that um, consultation response um, were uh, matters to do with um, drainage. Um, it is understood that currently there are concerns about um, the, uh, the drainage of the, um, the garden area there to uh, the existing dwellings um, and impacts that occasionally has in, in various different ways to, uh, to residents um, in the area. Um, other issues that uh, were raised were um, the overall um, openness of the area being affected by the um, proposed development um, and um, a number of people raised potential impacts um, to uh, uh, the amenity of uh, the resident of number 97 Greenheart uh, as a consequence of the house being there. <coughs> um, in terms of uh, statutory consultee responses, uh, excuse me, um, there was nothing raised uh, that um, presented any um, significant concerns uh, in policy terms. Though the site isn't allocated for housing development, um, the response there was to suggest that it, it um, would not be something that the, uh, the policy team would object to, uh, provided it met other the, all the other requirements of the local plan. From a highway safety perspective, uh, it was deemed acceptable by Staffordshire County Council Highways, um, and the parking spaces to be provided um, would be re required to be provided by way of condition before the house um, is developed if it were to be approved. In terms of uh, the character and appearance, uh, we've already discussed how it has um, changed in, uh, in size uh, and floor plan, and now um, it is considered that the proposal uh, much better accords with the, um, uh, the design of uh, the other properties in the neighbourhood um, and is um, more far more appropriate than what was previously submitted uh, for that site in uh, terms of character and appearance. When turning to neighbour amenity, uh, we, um, we considered a number of, of different aspects there um, and um, some of the issues that were raised uh, were very specific to uh, the relationship between the proposed house uh, and number 97 Greenheart. Um, it's considered that uh, the proposal uh, complies with um, the design uh, supplementary planning guidance that we have in terms of the, um, the layout uh, and uh, appearance of the, the property. And um, in terms of its impact on the adjacent uh, property, uh, one area that was um, flagged as a, a possible concern was that of light amenity to the, um, the, the first floor landing window of the adjacent property. Um, in practice, if uh, built, it would, the, um, the flank wall of the house would sit at least four metres away from that landing window. Um, so the, the impact would be minimal. Um, furthermore, the uh, design supplementary planning guidance that we work to states that landings are not habitable rooms and therefore uh, we, we don't need to take them into account when considering light amenity in that regard. Uh, 
One other aspect that was raised, um, just worth highlighting, is that uh, to the, um, the front of the property, there is currently a, a, a tree, um, and that that tree would be subject to a tree preservation order. Um, I can just confirm that there is indeed a tree preservation order on the site. Um, however, it is um, specific to oak trees and thorn trees, it's um, covering a general area, and none of the trees on that site um, are actually of the protected species under the terms of the, uh, the relevant 1972 tree preservation order. Um, so, in conclusion, the, um, uh, the proposal is recommended for approval on the basis that it um, is compliant with um, uh, the, the policies within the, um, the local plan um, and uh, meets the, uh, the requisite standards uh, for us to recommend it for approval. Thank you, uh, Andrew, for that presentation. Uh, we, uh, before moving on to speakers, we have two speakers tonight. Uh, we have also had a um, four-page uh, document that's, that's been handed to me by a uh, uh, caller, uh, Wade, who cannot be here tonight. So uh, I'm going to read that on his behalf. Um, I hope that I can do it justice. Um, so uh, without further ado, uh, this, is, this is from uh, Councillor Wade. So uh, I have called this application to committee as I've been contacted by the residents of Greenheart and by one resident, a Miss Carol Nib, who will be impacted more than most if this application is successful. Miss Nib has lived at 97 Greenheart for 43 years and has enjoyed her fundamental and democratic right to privacy, private and family life. Article 881 of the first protocol committee. I've had numerous phone conversations with Miss Nib as well. Uh, a visit the committee over the time I've had with Miss Nib, I can see this application has been stressful for Miss Nib, which in turn has had an effect on Miss Nib's mental health. If this application is successful, it will be detrimental to Miss Nib's health. Councillors, we here we are here to serve our residents and not to cause them harm. Um, objections. Um, article. Uh, 881 of the first protocol of human rights act persons private and family life and home peaceful enjoyment of possessions uh, so the site is not large enough uh, and that the proximity to the other dwellings would be an issue it would be a detached dwelling so it would be different to existing properties as they are semi-detached so it would not be in keeping with the other properties the proposed dwelling would uh, dramatically reduce the sense of openness in the corner space and that it would uh, look squeezed and would not be in keeping with the street scene there is concerns about parking arrangements as the proposed arrangements are on the corner part of the street in a called the sap uh, there's a drainage issue in and around the area no matter what drainage system you use we all know with a heavy downpour of rain all drainage systems can easily overflow and the excess surface water would spill into the boundary of 97 Greenheart which lies lower than the proposed dwelling which could possibly cause flooding to 97 Greenheart which is very possible <coughs> as there would be a hard surface around the proposed dwelling and they are removing the trees uh, that, that uh, they are removing probably what is stopping it flooding now a natural source of water absorption so instead of marked improvement to the current drainage situation as the report says it would have the opposite effect and cause more flooding there is no coal report which i find astonishing as this area is known to be built on a coal pit and as tbc planners have asked for a coal report and bore holes to be drilled on another application a mile away, the same should be applied to this application. Uh, no biodiversity report submitted, and, um, and was they removing trees? Nothing has been put forward for the wildlife uh, that use these trees. So uh, we know that Tamworth needs more housing, and I would like to support new houses being built, but councillors, on this occasion, I cannot and will not support this application as the reasons set out above. Uh, councillors, there's 40 plus objections to this application that that speaks volumes to what the residents of Greenheart think of this application. And that is signed off, uh, caller John Wade.
Okay, and as previously um, stated, we have two um, speakers next. So if um, Mr. Keith Dodd would like to, uh, to, to, to stand up and take the stand, um, we, we have three minutes um, for you to, uh, to, to have your say. There will be a countdown on the screen as well for you to just give uh, to aid you, okay? Yes, I'm ready to start. I'd like to acknowledge that my name's Keith Dodd. I'm the applicant for this application. Um, the proposed construction... Sorry, so could you just speak into the microphone a bit? Just put it a bit towards you. So it just Thank helps you. everybody see that. Thank you very much. The proposed construction of a two-bedroom dwelling, which is built for rental, this supports the requirement for rental properties in Tamworth, where current level of supply does not meet demand, particularly in this area. If you look on the current available properties in the whole of Tamworth, there is two rental properties of this size available, both of which are actually under offer. Following the objections made by the residents and with the support of Tamworth Council planning team, the proposed plans have been changed to mitigate, if not resolve, concerns identified in the initial planning application and consultation. The concern regarding the impact of increased damp in the garage of 97 Greenheart has been considered. The construction of the proposed dwelling will mean that rainwater is channeled to newly created soakaways and away from the land adjacent to 97 Greenheart. There is currently no drainage on the land adjacent to 97 Greenheart. This should therefore be an enhancement rather than a detriment. There is clearly a concern from the residents of Greenheart to the proposed scheme which regards to parking and traffic. We have considered the impact of parking for the residents of Greenheart and added two off-street parking spaces to 96 and in addition to, to the, new, new, the proposed plan for 96A Greenheart. This offers a higher ratio of car parking spaces than is currently um, witnessed within Greenheart as this is a two bedroom not three bedroom property. The impact of the proposed dwelling has been reviewed by Staffordshire Council Highways and if you read um, 6.4 in the application document and in particular 6.44 in light of the additional, additional off-street car parking provision the fact that the majority of objections to car parking in the street were based on activity not associated with the planning the proposed dwelling and the con conditional appearance of, uh, conditional acceptance of Staffordshire County Council highways for the proposal. It is considered to be complement that we compliant with the local plan and acceptable to the highways committee. The impact of the proposed dwelling, sorry, I beg your pardon. The following the decision to decline the original proposal for a three bedroom house, significant collaboration has been achieved with Tamworth Council planning team to modify the design. The design meets the Tamworth Council planning team's requirements and has resulted in the latest plans being a two bedroom dwelling in keeping with the current streetscape of Greenheart. Thank you. Thank you very much, Charles. Okay, there's uh, one more speaker, uh, Miss Carol Nib. Um, do you want to stand? Fantastic, thank you. Once again, you get three minutes. There will be a countdown on the slides. Okay, if you can just speak into the microphone so everybody can hear. Thank you very much. I have lived at 97 Greenheart for 43 years now for new. I'm sorry. I'm now retired and privacy enjoyment at my home is my priority. Article 8 and 1 of Human Rights Act states right of respect for private family life and home, peaceful enjoyment of possessions. This new build, due to higher ground in back garden, will allow them a view straight over the top of the fence from the garden down onto my patio and across the garden, being overbearing, overlooking and invading my privacy. I've also so appreciated the sunlight and warmth through the landing window which will be blocked. I'm very concerned that my property will be in danger of flooding due to local history of damp subsidence with higher ground next door, 
I have been informed it will then become a civil matter, so who will help me then? The land just isn't big enough, and it will look out of place within the street scene. Obvious case of overcrowding. Green space and openness will be lost, made worse by parking for 96, moved to side of property opposed to front as established pattern. This will cause dangerous highway concerns for the cul-de-sac. Established trees, one which was previously refused removal, will be lost. The report states 34 objections over two consultation periods. On counting, there were 49 objections, despite we only had one week the second time. This clearly shows strength of neighbours' opposition. The report also states the gardens for 95, 96 are adequate at 60 and 68 square metres for three bedroom dwellings. However, four to five people can live in a three bedroom house, which the design supplementary guidance states require 75 and 90 square metres respectively. So the gardens don't meet the guidelines. Four people at present live at 96. This is all a complete nightmare for me, causing so much anxiety, stress and worry for the past year because of this proposed build. I'm a seeing a doctor for this. I know that if this is approved, then it's going to have a serious detrimental effect on myself and I have serious concerns for my mental health and well-being. Sorry. To summarise, surely considering the strength of opposition from neighbours, 49 objections, infringement of privacy light, loss of openness and green space, inadequate garden space, drainage concerns, overcrowded, plus causing serious mental health issues, then this application cannot be approved. Thank you. Thank you, Ms Nib. Thank you. <coughs> Okay, we've heard from all of the speakers there this evening. Um, if we can move on to questions, please. Councillor Thurgood. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm trying to understand that layout. Is that the proposed future layout that we're looking at on the, on the screen there? Yes, uh, yes, it is, Councillor Thurgood. Okay, thank you. Um, if so, where are on the map, actually, if I look on Google, um, Google Maps, I see 96, 95, are they actually going to um, demoli uh, demolish 96, 95 or are they consolidating it? No, 95 and 96 Greenheart would remain as they are today. The only changes to those properties are changes to the um, uh, the boundary layouts between them and the proposed new build which it sits in the rear of what is currently their garden area adjacent to number 97. So the two units that we can see um, on the, the cul-de-sac at the start of the cul-de-sac? They remain in situ. They are not the new properties? No, the um, apologies for this perhaps not being as clear as it could be. This is the, the drawing submitted for the, the site layout. The, um, the new build property proposed uh, is the, um, the darker um, shape in the, uh, the left-hand part of the, uh, the site area. So am I right in saying if it's the in the right-hand side, did you say? No, in the left-hand side. In the left-hand side. And is that 97... Um, 98, um, as we're looking at it, to the top. 97 is, as we look at the, um, the image now, to the left of the, um, the proposed um, detached new build. What is the, 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 the grey box there? You've, you've got car parking spaces off the, um, the roadway in front of the, uh, the new build house okay. and then to the against the the two existing dwellings there um, there's two new car park spaces proposed there to serve number 96 number 95 Greenheart currently has two spaces in tandem to the okay. side of it 
Mm-hmm. 96 Green Hot doesn't have spaces adjacent to the house itself, and so the applicant has sought to um, have two spaces put in um, just perpendicular to the uh, the flank wall of the house there, off uh, off Green Hot. You have to excuse me with the distance and my eyesight, but where is on there 96 and 95? They are. It'd probably be helpful if somebody could actually point to. That's 95. Yeah. And that's 96. Yeah. Can you see that? Yeah. Can you just say what that's? That's 95. And that's 96. Okay, and we car park spots are in. Uh, okay, so the orientation, which isn't really shown there, is actually um, looking at it. Um, northwest, um, southeast, if that were a, a northerly facing um, view. So from the top left hand corner of the, no, no, sorry, of the dark block there where 95, 96 is, are you saying, no, down a bit, that's it. That block there, are they facing the main um, Greenheart Road? Uh, no, they're not. They are um, facing uh, approximately east southeast um, from the, um, uh, the, the the cul-de-sac element um, beyond the main so stretch as you come of down Greenheart. the cul-de-sac, you're turning right, and those two houses, 95, 96, are facing that road. They're, they're facing the end of the the Greenheart cul-de-sac there. Which is Whereas, which start? Southeast. southeast. Yeah. Whereas the proposed new dwelling is on the same alignment as the existing houses um, that face onto the main section, uh, face north, uh, okay. northeast onto the main section of Green So the next block along to the left is 97. Correct. Okay. Um, I can remember from planning training a few years ago, not that many years ago, but a few years ago, that with regard to privacy glass, if there was a landing and it, it was able to look over um, your house, that you could request privacy <coughs> glass in it. Um, Flemish glass, I don't know what you would really call it nowadays, but to ensure a bit of privacy for the, because I mean, somebody could walk out of the bathroom, nothing gone at all and walk past that landing, which they're entitled to do. Um, but in fairness, if that were the case, then either 97 should have privacy glass or um, the, 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 the 90, 96, 95, if they are able to overlook that garden, that's, um, that bathroom or landing, whatever it is, then shouldn't that... Um, have some sort of privacy glass in it to to ensure privacy. Chair, may I respond? Um, the um, the flank wall of the proposed new house yeah. has no uh, facing onto ninety seven has no windows within it, so there are no windows proposed within that elevation. Okay. So there would be no looking, uh, no no um, uh, chance to observe from the new build mm-hmm. directly into the landing of ninety seven. Um, in terms of the rear windows, mm-hmm. uh, there would be one obscure glazed window for the bathroom and one um, standard window for the, the rear okay. bedroom. On the other side, uh, the side facing the two existing properties at 95 and 96, mm-hmm. there would be one small um, landing window again. Um, however, that would be obscure glazed okay. so that there would be no overlooking um, from uh, the new dwelling to so the existing 95, 96 okay. or vice versa. And um, I think the, the speaker mentioned that the garden is higher than 97's garden, um, which would allow people to actually look over the fence into the next door's garden. Now, true, I mean, we've got six foot fencing possible, um, but presumably, I don't know whose cost responsibility that would be for to enable privacy um, is, has that been taken into account or is why why do we need that garden higher uh, rather than on the same level 
the, um, the ground levels there currently um, are higher within the proposed site area by approximately um, in the order of half a metre at most than the ground levels at 97 and um, the, the adjoining 98 green heart. Okay. There are fences in place already. If um, needed, um, there, there could be uh, additional fencing mm -hmm. um, conditions there. Um, but the, uh, the relationship between the two is that the between the side of um, the house at 97, there is a, a, a and the new build, if, if approved, there would be the garage to number 97. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, approximately one metre between the boundary uh, yeah. and the wall there. So there would, the new house would sit uh, a metre in to that site from the, um, the current boundary. Um, the uh, rear bedroom would face directly behind over... Um, other gardens to the rear rather than facing directly over number 97. There would, of course, be some vision from it. Of course. Yeah. Um, but um, it, it wasn't considered that um, with the nature of the layout there at the moment, that um, loss of privacy would, in, in practice, be a major issue there. Okay. Could I ask that if it's a case that... Um, when it well part of the conditions perhaps um that the option be um given to the owner of 97 if they feel they are overlooked that the correct height um, fencing could be put in place if so desired to actually ensure a bit of privacy there uh, i'll take advice on that but I'm, I'm sure there's something that we can look at um by way of uh, amending conditions yes. yeah because Okay, if, it's, if the house is being built, um, what we don't want is to um, cause distress, as it obviously is doing at the moment, to, to neighbours. I know it probably isn't a planning requirement or a consideration, but I think from a caring point of view, it, it, very small cost involved if, we, if the option was given to the next door neighbour to have that extra little bit of privacy. Yeah? Yeah. We can uh, we, we can look at that. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Thurgood. Uh, Councillor Harper, you next. <coughs> Thank you, Chair. Um, may I just get a, a similar sort of thing to Councillor Thurgood? Really, I'm struggling to try and work out where we are. Uh, if we look at the proposed site photograph. Uh, page 25. Um, uh, if we can put it up onto the, the screen, perhaps. That's the one, thank you. The house on the extreme right, just coming into the extreme right of the photograph, that is house number what? That's 97. That is 97. So, the drive, what we're actually looking at there, if this uh, planning application were granted, would be we'd be looking straight at, onto the drive of the new build. Is that correct? You'd be looking to diagonally across the frontage of the new build, yes. The driveway. The, the, part. Uh, the, the driveway and the, the whole of the frontage. Yeah. So, that large tree will be removed? Yes. And the house would go along the side of number 97. Um, on the plans, you've got, you've got one or two other trees. Uh, very nice on the, uh, on the illustration. But on the photograph, they look like a couple of bushes, really, that uh, aren't particularly um, enamoring. Um, I can well understand the applicant's concern um, for her environment, and I totally understand. Um, when you buy a house, um, you don't expect to have another house suddenly appear at the side of it. Garden grabs are anathema to, to everyone, really, except the person who's building it, who's doing it for financial reasons. Um, so the 
the planning of this, it looks, I can't really see any great planning issue that we can pull in on this, um, other than asking the, uh, the developer to plant some foliage, trees, greenery, because we're going to leave, uh, we're going to lose a significant amount of greenery because of this, um, which we are indeed losing throughout Tamworth because people are putting yeah. drives on their the front gardens. We, we are at questions at the moment. You, if you, okay. If you okay. So we can move on to debate. Okay. Um, okay. Well, I'll uh, I'll close it at that. Thank you. Councillor Maycock. Sorry, Chair, Chair's Chair. Um, I just want to ask officers, uh, <clears throat> under planning, isn't the uh, Article 8 taken into account? Andrew? The, um, the Article 8 is... Uh, taken into account. Um, just to... Yeah, if, if you wouldn't mind, please. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, essentially, um, the courts have decided that the, the way that we determine planning applications and the weighing up the merits of things in the planning bar balance, including residential amenity, is compliant with the Human Rights Act. So, provided um, we act proportionally and reasonably and weigh all the matters up appropriately, um, then any decision of the authority would be deemed to be compliant with the human rights provisions. And there is an act that, obviously, this report um, covers the relevant issues that the Human Rights Act requires a planning authority to consider when determining an application, including the impact on residential amenity of neighbours and their right to privacy. And the matters on those matters are addressed uh, in the report and the officers have concluded it is acceptable in planning terms. Thank you. Uh, just one more question. Um, the speaker um, stated about the two gardens. Um, could I just get some clarification on whether them, the reduction in size is going to meet guidance? Okay, for me. Um, the, the garden um, <laughs> sizes, um, as proposed, um, are indeed a reduction from what is there today for um, numbers 95 and 96 Greenheart. Um, as I've put in the report, um, the external areas, the proposed dwelling and the remaining garden areas of the existing 95 and 96 Greenheart, when assessed against the design supplementary planning guidance, indicate that the gardens would comply with that guidance. Paragraph 4.72 of the guidance states that the council would encourage applicants to seek to achieve minimum external amenity space standards for new dwellings as follows. Two person dwelling 45 square metres, three person dwelling 60 square metres and four person dwelling 75 square metres. The approximate garden areas proposed would be 106 square metres for the new dwelling, 60 for 95 Greenheart and 68 square metres for 96 Greenheart which would exceed the guidance for three-person dwellings. Um, it, it is accepted that um, four-person dwelling um, at 75 square metres um, would require a larger area um, if that were to be um, a hard and fast requirement. But um, as, as it states in paragraph 4.72, the council would encourage applicants to seek to achieve those minimum external standards, it, it's not a hard and fast requirement. And therefore, um, it's deemed that the, um, uh, the proposal is broadly in compliance. Cheers, thank you. Thank you. Is there any more, more questions? Uh, Councillor Jones, you had your hand up. Yes, uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, just a curious question. Um, was there any residents within Greenheart 
that were in favour of this, other than the applicant. Obviously, it's mentioned that obviously the 40 residents were against this, but was there anyone in favour of this drilling? Thank you, Councillor Jones. Uh, I hand over to the officers. Um, at the time that I wrote the um, the report, um, I'll go back to to what we got in here. Um, at that time, there were in total across the two consultation periods 34 emails of objection received from 29 separate objectors within 22 separate property addresses, um, of which four objections had come in in response to the second round of consultation. Um, it is absolutely correct to say, though, that they were, they were all objections from the immediate locality, and no, there were no other supporters other than the, um, uh, the applicant himself. Thank you, Chair. Uh, is any other members who uh, want to uh, ask any questions? Okay, fantastic. We're done with, so we're moving on to the debate now. Thank you. Councillor Goodall to kick off. Thank you, Chair. Um, I generally support housing development as a as a general thing, but <clears throat> to me, this does not seem an asset to this this area. Really. There's, it's a well-established residential area, and we, we've heard there's considerable resident opposition to it. So. I will wait until uh, I've heard the rest of the debate, but at the moment I'm, uh, I'm, 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 I'm near another side of caution at the moment. Thank you, uh, Councillor Goodall. Councillor Smith on the court, on the end. So, at first I was, um, you know, my sort of thinking on the matter is that generally house building, you know, is kind of really required. There's a lot of um, people that need houses. So that's kind of my mindset at first. And then um, looking at this, you know, it's not going to, it's not going to fulfill that. It's not like, it's only one house. So... I'm not, it's not going to solve the housing crisis, basically, is what I'm trying to say. And I just think it's, I just think we should really be thinking about the residents in this situation. And, you know, if, if you were living here, you, you might have objections as well, because it is in your area. And that's what you've got to think about. And there's so many objections to this in the local area by residents. Um, you know, they've, they've bought their houses at a particular time based on the surrounding area. And I know certain changes can happen, but generally, you know, I like to look at it in that sense. Um, and it's just gonna be more aggro for one for one house. You know, there's gonna be noise, there's gonna be dust. Whenever whenever there's any kind of house building, the amount of dust that, that spreads across the area is phenomenal. Um, so I'm, I'm leaning, I lean, I'm leaning towards more against this at the moment. But I would be uh, happy to hear what the rest of the uh, uh, members have to say on this. Thank you, Councillor Smith. Uh, Councillor Maycock was next. Just give you a moment to swap over your mic. Yeah. Um, so, looking materialistically at this, although there are so many objections, which there are, I feel that they've been looked at in depth and in the report that they've been taken into account. So planning wise, along with uh, Councillor Harper, I think on a, a planning wise, it's, it's hard to, to say no materialistically, although I do acknowledge the, the amount of public objection to it. Um, I'll let somebody else come in there. 
Thank you, Councillor Maycock. Councillor Summers was in there. Thank you. Um, as far as I can see, Chair, um, the, there are things that are open in, to interpretation on this um, in terms of uh, the officer's decision, but I feel that um, it actually contravenes EM5 part C, B of a scale layout form and massing which conserves or enhances the setting of the development. Well, as far as I'm concerned, it doesn't. It is a smaller house next to larger houses. Um, it would look out of place in the area. And also, we've heard evidence that would suggest it contravenes Part G, minimise or mitigate environmental impacts for the benefit of existing and prospective occupants of neighbouring land. Such impacts may include loss of light, privacy or security, or unacceptable noise, pollution, flooding or sense of enclosure. I don't think um, it can meet that criteria. I think it actually contravenes it. And if the planning uh, committee are minded, I would like to propose that we refuse on those grounds. Thank you, uh, Councillor Summers. Is that a motion to move then, is it? Will you be seeking a seconder? Yes, yes, please. Seconded by Councillor Goodall. So we're going to invite the officers to respond to that. Re a reason for a refusal? based on what was uh, cited earlier by uh, Councillor Summers. Um, if I may, I'd like to uh, defer that to uh, to Glenn, however, uh, to answer um, sort of formally, but certainly my um, feeling as the, the officer responsible for writing the report was that in actual fact, um, the proposal was compliant with that policy, that it met the requirements um, of the, um, the local plan in ways that meant that it, it would be compliant. Um, and indeed, uh, one of the um, topics that has been raised on a number of occasions uh, in the discussion this evening is that of drainage, um, which um, in terms of uh, environmental impact, um, it was my opinion that uh, the proposed development with um, additional drainage provided uh, in the form of um, soak away units um, beyond, over and above that required for the proposed new dwelling itself would actually be an improvement compared to what is there today. Um, but uh, if I may hand over to, to Glenn, uh, just to uh, give his view, that would be appreciated. Thank you, Andrew. Well, councillors may remember <laughs> last month we had an application before us at Coton Lane where we refused, well, I recommended refusal on the grounds of design. So I would be minded to, you know, if that is deemed to be a consideration here, then I would put forward that motion that we're looking at a scheme potentially here that does not accord with our design policies, that does not echo the ethos um, of, yeah, the current trend into obviously securing high quality design. And I'd be minded not to obviously, you know, put words in your mouths, but that would be something I'd be um, looking to refuse on if you were consistent with that issue here, I think. Um, but and I think Andrew has done a stellar job, you know, reading his report. He has considered design thoroughly and exercising, but very much getting a scheme here that does accord with all the relevant guidance and, yeah, of a, of a quite good quality design. But um, equally, if a, decision, a different view needs to be taken, then I'll be taking that line. Thank you. We'll go back to Councillor Summers. Yeah, thank you. Um, I appreciate what's been said. I appreciate your professional um, input on this and the fact that you've written the report. But of course, as a planning committee, we have liberty to challenge that and have our own opinions on such. Um, and uh, I believe the reasons I've come up for refusal are material. And uh, as I have a seconder now, um, I would wait to see what the rest of the um, committee say. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you. Um, just, um, just to clarify, because um, you did include with your reason, one of the reasons for refusal was the... Uh, so, just to clarify before the debate goes on, so members are all clear. So, the reason for refusal, um, you it was on essentially, uh, it, it was policy EM5C, and you're talking about scale layout, form and massing. And Glenn confirmed it um, in the planning officer's view, it would be sustainable in design terms to support, um, that could be defended. 
Um, you also talked about environmental impacts, light noise, flooding, and the sense of enclosure. Yeah. Um, just to flag up that the officer has given some advice that the flooding issue could be overcome by conditions which are proposed in the application. Um, so I just wondered if you wanted to consider removing flooding as a, one of the reasons for refusal because the advice this technical advice is that that could be overcome and could actually make the situation better before the debate continued um, whilst I appreciate that um, we we can give no guarantees on it um, we, we, we look we don't have a crystal ball um, it could well um, be uh, mitigated um, I, I'm happy to remove it but stand by everything else I've, uh, I've proposed that's a consideration. Thank you. So well, are you suggesting that you will remove flooding or did you want to leave it in? I can remove flooding. And would the seconder be happy with that? So as the reasons for refusal are as, uh, uh, as the member has moved and seconded, but they're excluding flooding as a reason for refusal because the officer advises the flooding issue could be overcome by mitigation. Thank you. Thank you. So yeah, just mindful, we've got a motion on the floor to vote on. Um, however, we do have uh, Councillor Harper, who has indicated to come in. Um, so we, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll do that first, and then we'll go back to the vote, just in case you want something to make. Thank you, Chair. Very briefly, uh, I think most of the um, uh, points I was going to make have, have already been covered. Um, but I would like to um, congratulate Councillor Summers on, uh, on coming up with what I think is a very good and solid reason for this um, we are here to look after um, the interests of local people as planners as well as people as well as councillors and I don't think that this application is in anyone's benefit uh, other than the uh, applicant and um, should be refused on the grounds that councillor Summers has already laid out Thank you, Chair. Is there anybody else that would like to say in this debate before we move to vote? Councillor Thurgood. Thank you, Chair. Quite often, um, members of the public don't understand how planning works. And we do have hearts, but we have to listen to what the planning department, what the officers have um, looked at and presented their evidence. And it is evidence-based. Um, however, I would agree with Councillor Summers that in this case, the, the type of housing proposed there is not in character with the other houses in the street. Um, so I think that um, has settled my mind in terms of which way we vote. Um, I would uh, like to thank the planning department, uh, Andrew, for your, for your good presentation, because what it does is give us something to actually look at, understand and to go forward with, whether it's refusal or acceptance. So, thank you for that. Cheers. Thank you, Councillor Thurgood. Councillor Maycock has indicated. Uh, I just wanted to ask Glenn, when you said uh, defend, was that the local authority could defend that choice? Correct. So if we're going to appeal, then yes, design grounds is something, you know, I'm sure we could have a, a good bash at it. We may ask members for your assistance in that regard. So if you want to put some pointers in terms of what specifically you have an issue with, if we're looking at the layout, we're looking at the design of the house, there's obviously anything we can do to um, yeah, to support an appeal statement, should it be submitted, well, an appeal should it be submitted, then yes. That's what I'm referring to. Thank you. Councillor Summers has indicated. Happy to provide that. Uh, it doesn't. Uh, it is not of the same scale as the other housing in that area. Um, it um, is not of the same size, um, and obviously, it was refused on being any larger uh, because it would be um, th there wouldn't be enough space for to to accommodate that. Uh, so now we're in a position where it's uh, it's too small, as far as I'm concerned, to uh, to look in character with the rest of the area. Um, it doesn't uh, enhance the setting or conserve the setting of the area um, as it is now. It doesn't look, it won't look or be enhanced by that building being there um, added on to that corner space. Um, so I, I would think that's justification enough. 
Thank you, Councillor Summers. Just before we move on to the vote, can I uh, make a suggestion that in future, with regards to these scale drawings, we have some form of orientation on it, whether that be a, a compass point to point to north or some form of you know, some way so that um, the, the members can see the screen and know exactly how it's orientated to the street view? Are there any more uh, points to make in the debate or are we moving on to a vote on the motion? Okay, so if we move on to the vote of the motion, please. All those in favour of the motion put forward by Councillor Summers. One, two, three, four, oh. one, uh, two, three. Is this to refuse? Yeah, yeah, the yeah. refusal, yeah, sorry. Okay, so uh, the, the results of the vote are obvious that it, the, this application has been refused based on the uh, motion put forward by Councillor Summers uh, due to the scale. And we move on to the next application um, to, uh, with us and, and the final one this evening. It's uh, application number 03792022. It's a change of use from public house to two times retail units uh, class C at ground floor and three times apartments class C3 at first floor. Erection of side and rear extensions and creation of external amenity space. And with that, I'll be handing over once again to Andrew to do the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, the, uh, the proposal, uh, as it states, is described <coughs> as a change of use from public house uh, to two retail units, uh, ground floor, three apartments, uh, first floor, erection of uh, side and rear extensions and creation of external amenity space. It should be noted, however, that the, um, the site is actually a former public house at present um, and hasn't been in use as a public house, uh, I believe, for some two years now. Um, the proposal uh, seeks to uh, take the, uh, the original building, having removed um, more modern additions to it, um, and to extend it um, quite significantly um, on its um, uh, eastern side. Um, what you see there is the proposed front elevation. Uh, for the uh, the extended um, building, with uh, the um, the first floor and so, uh, ground and first floor extension to the side, um, in the uh, uh, sort of traditional brick colour there, um, with uh, the uh, new shop front uh, elevation um, across both the uh, the existing building and the uh, the proposed side extension there. The um, the proposal. Uh, is uh, complex in the sense that it has um, the, uh, the the frontage there um, and the um, to the side uh, the extension with um, uh, ground floor accommodation for um, a retail unit at first floor um, within the extension and um, the original part of the building um, three apartments proposed um, and um, on the um, uh, the rear of the uh, the extension, uh, sorry, rear the the, the site, um, you've got car parking uh, proposed for the uh, uh, the two retail units and the um, the residents of the proposed three apartments. The um, the original proposal was for um, a retail unit. Uh, for um, a supermarket type, small supermarket type facilities, um, and a um, hot food takeaway, and also for four apartments at first floor level. Um, following discussion with uh, the, uh, the agent, uh, the uh, scheme was amended to remove the, um, uh, the takeaway element from it, and to reduce the number of uh, apartments from four to three. Also, 
following um, the initial uh, discussions that were held and the initial consultation, uh, it became uh, apparent, thanks to Councillor Harper's involvement in it, that there were heritage aspects um, associated with this um, that hadn't been taken into account originally. And um, by the time of the, the second consultation, um, the, uh, the heritage aspects had been taken into account uh, and um, the frontage uh, that you see proposed now uh, was introduced as a, an amended element of the scheme to try and better reflect the, um, the shop frontages um, found elsewhere on, on Litchfield Street. The other element um, in relation to heritage um, that had uh, uh, been explored which hadn't been um, in the initial stages, was to um, seek advice from Staffordshire County Council's historic environment team on archaeological matters um, due to uh, the site, uh, as we were advised um, by Councillor Harper, sitting on uh, a former medieval town hall, um, which um, is, is known to be in that area. The um, scheme also uh, was amended from the um, original proposal um, by virtue of adding uh, a, a roof terrace over the, um, for, uh, the ground floor um, single storey uh, element of the, uh, the proposed scheme uh, to the rear of the, uh, the original um, pub building. The, um, the intention being there that by providing external amenity space uh, for the, uh, the three apartments proposed, um, a better quality of uh, accommodation um, could be provided for uh, future residents there. Um, further changes uh, were sought by Staffordshire County Council Highways in respect of parking um, and uh, the scheme now includes for uh, cycle parking provision in the, um, the rear ground floor um, element, um, along with alongside the, um, uh, the various uh, waste storage areas. Um, and uh, as I mentioned earlier, there's parking provision uh, meeting the, um, the requirements of Appendix C of the local plan um, in the sense of there being one uh, car park space provided uh, per apartment, um, in addition to uh, there being uh, delivery space <coughs> that has been deemed acceptable um, by Staffordshire County Council Highways uh, for the two um, commercial elements of it. The, uh, the design uh, has been modified to um, uh, try and better reflect, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, some of the heritage assets in the area around it. But it is important to note that the, um, the building itself um, is not a listed building and does not actually sit within the uh, Tamworth Town Centre conservation area. It is on the edge of it, but does not sit within it. Um, and so the, um, uh, the changes that have been uh, brought forward um, have been brought forward in order to try and uh, improve the scheme. Um, but the, um, the actual heritage status of it is such that it, it is not um, formally part of the, the conservation area. Um, and uh, indeed, the conservation officer, um, when uh, consulted upon the, the amended scheme, um, took the view that the, uh, the proposals um, ha caused her to have no objection to them um, and uh, endorsed them in, in that regard. The um, the scheme, therefore, um, is uh, recommended for approval um, with uh, two retail units beneath, um, the three apartments above, um, external amenity space on the, um, uh, the, the rear single storey roof, um, and uh, is deemed to, uh, to be uh, compliant with uh, the, uh, the various local plan policies relating <coughs> to town centre development um, and to um, uh, sustainability matters. Uh, 
Fantastic, thank you, Andrew, as always. So uh, to move on to the speakers, we have one speaker for this application tonight, who is the agent, um, Daljit Baria. I hope I haven't absolutely murdered the pronunciation of your name there, so uh, I do apologise if I have. But uh, if you would like uh, your three minutes to, uh, to speak, please, there uh, will be a countdown on the screen for you to aid you. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Um, sorry, I've got a bit of a sore throat. Just come back from Marrakesh on a stag. But, but, <coughs> but um, I think Andrew's just, um, just sort of explained the whole history about the, the scheme. Uh, it was a larger scheme originally, but our client, you know, um, uh, has downscaled the project quite a bit. There has been other interest on the site to actually do a demolition of the building and maybe put a bigger block, maybe four or five stories, just similar to the blocks at the back with the residential tower blocks, but obviously that's out the window. So we've tried to reduce it as much as we can. Um, and try to use a space sort of um, within keeping of the site. Uh, like like uh, Andrew just, just said, you know, we're trying to keep the heritage side of it with the nice uh, wooden shop fronts to keep it within keeping within, within the main road. Um, all the residential units meet the standard guidelines of uh, space size. We've got the parking, um, highways are happy with it. Uh, it was on a site of an old, um, the old town hall, but there has been some previous extensions already done on the site, but we have agreed by doing a heritage statement that we'll do a standing brief, so any excavations that is done, um, they will be monitored. Um, but apart from that, I think everything's uh, Andrew's said, so I think that's all I've got to say. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you, Mr. Barrier. Uh, yeah, you don't need to take the full three minutes, so uh, thank you for that. Um, okay, uh, we're done with speakers, so we'll move on to questions. Councillor Thurgood. Thank you, Chair. Um, the fact that there was a, a town hall, or the, was it the Warwickshire one or the Staffordshire? Staffordshire, Staffordshire uh, town hall, uh, which this replaced, um, is... Is there any plans for any sort of archaeological dig to verify that that's where it was? Um, and also, the Conservation Committee, Conservation Area Committee. Conservation, the Thomas Area Conservation Advisory Committee. I was on, I was on that committee when I was mayor. Um, and there was a, I think, chaired by uh, Jonathan, I can't remember his surname, from Staffordshire. Peter Edden was the... No, there was, there was a guy after that. Um, I think it was, it sounded Australian, but, um, but there was a committee with experts, um, local experts like John, um, a lot of others, um, where we sat and we went through the listed buildings. If, it, if I've heard right, the Litchfield Road or Litchfield Street is no longer on that conservation area. And that worries me a little bit. It would be nice if we could re-establish, bearing in mind there are some old buildings down Litchfield Street, um, some Tudor buildings. Um, it would be nice to actually see that committee reinstated so that when applications such as this um, come into play, that the planning officers immediately have got good information uh, at their fingertips on um, what is um, possibly under where they're planning to build. Um, so um, that's a question. If uh, to so I think there's there's two there, Peter. Yeah, there so is. You, sorry, so you, you, do you want to go with the the so we allow the officers to answer the first archaeological, okay. which is the which is the yeah the, the archaeological checks on yeah the, yeah. Thank you, Chair. Uh, yeah, in answer to that question, uh, the response from Staffordshire County Council's historic environment team uh, was to um, seek conditions to be placed upon the application for uh, an archaeological watching brief. So with the relatively limited excavations that will take place on the site um, for the, um, the extensions, that there would be um, a, an archaeological element to um, those works and uh, any, um, any uh, material of interest 
um, discovered during those excavations would then be um, appropriately uh, catalogued and dealt with mm -hmm. um, by the um, the archaeologists that the uh, the applicant would have to um, to have on site. Okay, um, sort of still related to the possible excavation. Um, is there a limit on in terms of destroying um, archae archaeological artifacts? or um, footprint of the original building by going down for foundations for the new build? So, so just to... oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry, just to come in, Peter. Uh, it, it, it is in the report. Uh, it's condition four um, in the conditions reasons in, in the report. So um, if, I, if I can leave you to just read that part of the report, and then if you do want to come in uh, with, a, with another question, then just indicate... Okay, cheers. Thank you, Peter. Uh, moving on to Martin Summers. Uh, Cou sorry, Councillor Summers. That's fine. I really don't mind, Chair. Andrew. Um, can I ask why this was called in? Uh, this was called in by Councillor Harper. Um, can, I, can I allow you to answer that? You certainly can. It was called in because this building stands on the site of one of the most importantly historical Tamworth buildings, namely the Staffordshire Town Hall. This building that we see today is 84, 85 years old. It stands on the exact footprint of the previous building, which was a single story pub. When it was built in 1937, there was a huge hoo ha because they were aware of the Staffordshire um, town hall that stood on the site. And the only reason that this particular pub building or the extended pub building was allowed was that they built it on the same footprint as the earlier pub, which again stood on the site of what was believed to be the old Staffordshire town hall. Um, the town hall would have been stood because i'm sure councillor summers knows that tamworth used to be in two counties and the and the um warwickshire town hall is um the current town hall that we are occupying at this very moment and the staffordshire one was this particular site or very near it we don't know because no one's ever actually gone down and had a look um it's of huge importance to the development of Tamworth and for development to go ahead and that could possibly destroy the evidence of a building we know very little about would be utter sacrilege and um, well it would be a, a dreadful um, mistake and um, a problem for future generations to understand what's actually there. That's why I called it in. Thank you, Councillor Harper, for uh, clearing that up. Councillor Summers? I, I understand the motivation, and sorry to press on the point, but given the report is rather detailed and it also takes account of the archaeological side, I just under, I don't understand why it... What, what, motivation what is going to be gained by bringing it in front of the planning committee so that's what I'm trying to understand why if it was up for approval and it, everything is considered what is going to be added or changed within this this forum that makes any material difference to this planning application for it to have been brought before us and spend you know considerable amount of time on and I'm not denigrating it's important whatsoever I must make that clear Yeah, we're just going to check the criterion on the on the form that it was used to call in. We have got the form, so we'll, we'll just bear with us. We'll, uh, we'll we'll look at the criterion. It's a good point. Thank you.
Right, just while we check the criterion on that, I'll come back to you, uh, Councillor Summers. Is there anybody else that has any other questions? Oh, Councillor Harper. Yeah, we'll uh, hopefully come back to that particular point at some point. Um, may I just question why the road to the left of the um, uh, building on the plan is called Balfour? It isn't. It's New Street. Balfour is at the rear of the... Um, of the buildings, part of the flats development. In actual fact, the original pub stood between two roads. New Street, facing the pub from the road, New Street was on the right, which still exists, and on the left, where the current or the new extension is planned, was Brewery Lane. Both met at the bottom by the river where the brewery stood, the Tamworth Brewery. Um, I think it would have been, uh, I think it's, a, it's unfortunate this, uh, this mistake has been made. Okay, Councillor Harper, I'll uh, refer to the officers on that one, if I may. Um, yeah, if I may, all I've, I've done there is taken the, um, the map data that we have available to us that indicates that road as Balfour. So I will go back and check again. Um, however, to my knowledge there, uh, to my belief, there, there is no mistake there. It is um, simply we've taken what, uh, what is commonly recorded there as that, uh, that road name. Um, if, I, if I may, if you look at the photographs, you'll see the road sign. Um, wherever they may be. Um, so you look at the photographs and you look at the side of the building, you will see the road sign. Bottom left hand photograph. Yeah, you'll see it's New Street. In which case, I may I apologise? <laughs> It's fine. It's probably not the first time Google's wrong and Councillor Harper's right. So, uh. <laughs> who am I to question Google? Um, my question again is: um, the building was built, as we've we've said, to reflect other buildings in the street at the time when it was built in 1937. It was built in the Georgian style because most of the surrounding buildings were Georgian. Consequently, it had wooden sash windows and brickwork that matched the surrounding properties, many of which have now been pulled down, of course, in the 1960s. Um, I understand from the, from the drawings uh, that we're now going to be presented with... Um, UPVC windows, is that correct? Again, I'll refer to the officers on that one. I've, I've missed that one in the design. Uh, I'll have to come back to you with um, confirmation of that if, if that's acceptable, Councillor Harper. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor Harper. Um, my, we have got Councillor Thurgood waiting. However, we do have an answer to uh, Councillor Summers' his, uh, question about why it was called in, what, what, what process was used. So uh, without further ado, I'll hand over to Glenn, who has that answer for you. Thank you. Thank you. So the call-in sheet was completed, as, as duly should be, and the, it says the property stands on or very near the site of Tamworth's former 17th century Staffordshire Town Hall. Important archaeological evidence may still exist to its importance, but unknown building. The property is a prominent building on the periphery of the town centre conservation area and must continue to harmonise with its surrounding properties. The change of use will require major structural alterations to the building. The building was constructed in 1937 to a neo-Georgian design that reflected existing buildings in Litchfield Street. 
The ground floor has already been gutted and a large section of the roof and rear wall has been removed. This has been done without the approval of the planning authority and prior to the application being submitted. Does that answer your question, Councillor Summers? Yes and no, um, but I will leave it there. Thank you, Councillor Summers. Are there any other questions? Uh, sorry, Councillor Thurgood. Thank you, Chair. Um, I guess it's sort of related to this application, but what I also asked in my first um, my first go was a two-part question. I went through with the first part, but the second part, is it possible that the um, Heritage Committee can be uh, reinstated? Um, just really so that people with local knowledge can actually um, have their input, um, which then the officers can look at um, themselves, perhaps be involved in this even. Um, but thank you, that's it. Thank you, Councillor Thurgood. Uh, again, I'll refer back to the office with regards to the Heritage Committee getting involved. Um, Chair, uh, just checking, did, where, did you ask about the Heritage Committee being reinstated? Because earlier you referred to an extension, potentially looking at extension of the conservation mm. area. Sorry. Because can we um, extend the conservation area to Thank you. Um, the, process, the process for extending a conservation area, it was a statutory process you need to go through. And an office, there's an amount of work to be done for officers. The first has to be, as you know, I'm sure, um, an appraisal of the area, a character appraisal and a submission. And there has to be heritage justification for extending a conservation area. That is a process of work that officers would need to go through potentially in, in collaboration with members and if that is something that um, you uh, members felt that was um, uh, was appropriate or that that was something that members wanted to request I'm sure they could request that and that would go to the director of the assistant director of development thank you absolutely yeah. Andrew just wants to come in uh, thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, just, just for clarity, um, the, the Town Centre Conservation Area does extend along much of the length of Litchfield Street further to the west of this site. The issue here, though, is that the actual former three-ton site itself is not within the conservation area. It's right on the boundary of it, um, but outside of it. The, the conservation area extends further along and then encompasses... Um, a significant number of the buildings um, on that southern side of Litchfield Street um, as you, you head <coughs> further west. So apologies if I've given you the impression that actually it, it had finished altogether by the time this site is reached. It does ex extend further to the west of it. Um, however, just to um, uh, reiterate, the actual proposal site is outside of the conservation area. Councillor Thurgood, do you want to come back on that? Yes, thank you. Um, there used to be a booklet with all of the listed buildings within the conservation area. Um, so that must still exist somewhere. Um, but it was updated regularly. Um, I mean, I think the one when I was on the committee was Bol Bol Hall um, Flats, the Bol Hall House, um, where the, um, the Staffordshire... Uh, conservation officer wasn't aware that it had any importance or indeed the wall outside it had significant um, significance so the local knowledge actually enabled the conser conservation officer to keep updated with exactly what was important in the town so that was my reason for asking you know if it that committee um, advisory committee could be reinstated and I think it would be a, an aid to the planning officers uh, in the future. Thank you, Chair.
Yeah, so we, what we need to do is we need to determine this application first, and then, then we would have to then go through that process. Okay, Councillor Thurgood, th thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Maycock. Thank you. It's just adding a bit on to uh, Councillor Harper's question about the UPVC windows, <clears throat> which is what they look like on the picture. Um, 6.2.7 to 6.2.9 uh, speaks about materials and that the council will be looking at them. Uh, it's to mimic um, the, the older frontages on Litchfield Street. Um, when it says mimic, I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't going to be like a Forks UPVC wood looking sort of thing as opposed to it actually mimicking it in wood. Uh, yeah, again, I'll go back to the officers on that one. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, the word mimic there was used not specifically in regard to the, the, the type of material used in the, um, the construction of the windows, more in the sense of the overall appearance. Um, what I, I would say is that the uh, having checked the original application had stated that <coughs> UPVC window frames would be um, part of the proposal. However, um, what we have recommended here is uh, a condition prior to commencement um, that all uh, details of all mater external materials to be used are submitted to the council for approval. So we have a means um, if the committee feels that some alternative material is more appropriate to, um, uh, to actually uh, require um, a different material to be used rather than the UPVC in the windows. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, Councillor Maycock, you're happy with that? Okay. Are there any other questions for... Oh, Councillor Harper. Strangely enough, yes. The first floor uh, of the building was um, destroyed, basically, uh, by some previous tenants who plastered the brickwork with white masonry paint. Um, the idea of the original building, which of course lasted, as we've already said, for 34, five years, whatever it is, without any exterior um, problems. And now, of course, once you paint bricks with paint, it ruins it and it has to be done every other year or else you get horrible streaks and it looks tired and dirty um, so my question is are there any plans to remove the white paint or is that going to stay with us forever and a day thank you thank you councillor harper again i refer to the office on that one i don't think i've seen that in the report either no that hasn't been addressed in the report um, that's something that we can, um, if the committee is minded to approve, again, we can take up with the, um, the applicant through means of conditions. Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, are there any other questions from committee members? No? Fantastic. Okay, so we move on to the debate segment then. And uh, to kick off the debate in usual form is Council Goodall. Thank you, Chair. Shame it's not a pub still, to be to be to be honest. Um, enjoyed many a many a pint through that front door. Um, <clears throat> I think I think sometimes we need to take a step back sometimes, and um, I think the development in its current form really isn't an asset to the to the the street scene. It's uh, dilapidated and isn't going anywhere. I'm, I'm mindful to support this. I think um, the development looks good. I think it will be an asset to the street. I think um, I think it's got a number of of uses that we've seen: the shop frontage, the apartments. Um, I I I really like it. Um, 
in fact, I like it that much. I'm going to formally move to approve it. Thank you. Uh, so we seek a seconder for that uh, that, that motion. I second that, Chair, so, and if I may speak on that. Absolutely, Councillor Summers. Um, yeah, um, it's nice to see an often overlooked um, area of the town uh, being invested in, and I would like to thank the applicant for investing in in the town. Um, it's a good uh, development. Um, hopefully, we'll. Uh, reduce what is essentially, as far as I'm concerned right now, an eyesore um, to history. Um, and uh, hopefully, uh, as long as it does remain sympathetic with the uh, with the rest of the area, um, I really look forward to that, uh, that area being enhanced by the development. So I formally second. Thank you, Councillor Summers. Uh, Jane has just indicated that she did want to speak before I'll go to Councillor Price. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. All it was was to say that members had previously suggested two additional... Uh, there had been a discussion around two additional conditions, one of which was which officers had given advice on, one of which was to do with the material for the UPVC windows, which officers had said that they would support being included <coughs> in a condition. Is that Was that reasonable? Uh, y yes. Yeah, and that would be for the, all of the windows, ground floor or upper floor, or what? Yeah. Uh, uh, if, if, if I may jump in there, so condition three lists that prior to the commencement of the development, hereby approved details of all materials to be used in the construction of the external services of the development shall be submitted to and approved by the local planning authority in right. writing. Thank you. So that's condition, sorry, Chair. Um, but the second one was the paint, the removal of the paint. Um, that that had been suggested, um, and you met, you indicated that there could that could be conditioned as well. You'd support that condition. Sorry. Yeah. Again, I would suggest that that falls under the the condition that the chair has just mentioned. The the external surfaces. Thank you. Thank you, chair. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Price. Thank you, chair. Um, I just wanted to. Um, I, I want to. Uh, uh, I'm happy to support this, but I wanted to disagree with Councillor Goodall. I'm not sad to see it not be a pub anymore. Um, as somebody that's chaired licensing for many years, um, this site has been nothing but a problem site to the town. Um, so I'd like to thank the applicant for um, for, for taking that away from us. Um, I, th I think the, the application, um, it, it looks good. I think it will be a good addition to the town, uh, and I'll be happy to support it. Thanks, Chair. Thank you very much, Councillor Price. Um, over to Councillor Thurgood. Thank you, Chair. Um, I've got to be honest, the fact that there's going to be a shop there is going to enhance the lives, I believe, of a lot of my residents within my ward who live in the high-rise flats, who rely on motor scooters, that they have invalidity problems. Um, and so... I'm minded to support the application on that basis. Thank you, Councillor Thurgood. Uh, Councillor Maycock. Thank you, Chair. Uh, like the other speakers, uh, more than happy to support it, uh, and especially with my health and wellbeing head on, that it's not going to be a fast food place. Uh, the Down that street and up into town along that street that there are more than enough fast food uh, stores so it's, it's good to hear that that's a, a condition that it, there won't be any there. Thank you. Thank you Councillor Maycock. Uh, Councillor Smith has indicated that the swap of mics is commencing. Yeah, I was just going to say, um, at the end of the day somebody's bothering, bothering to put money into it, it's what Tamworth needs. Um, thank you to the applicant for that, and uh, yes, I will be supporting this. Fantastic. Are there any other points in the debate? Councillor Harper. Yeah, thank you. I'd, I'd like to take issue with one or two points. that um, This has not always been a problem area. It has recently, uh, recent years, it has been badly managed and allowed to fall into a dreadful state of dereliction. Uh, it hasn't always been like that. It was a time, not that long ago, uh, that it was Tamworth's best public house. 
and um, it was well run, it was popular, and it was used by local people as a meeting place and uh, a valuable local amenity. It's only recent years that have seen it deteriorate to what it's become now. Um, as it is, the building is wrecked. It's um, the the interior has been taken away. The ex much of the exterior has been taken away, and um, there isn't much more we can do with it. I don't think, other than uh, let this um, scheme go ahead, and um, and hopefully um, the applicants will be aware of the importance of harmonizing with surrounding properties and taking into account the history of the street and of this particular area of the town. It is an important building because it's the first building um, or low-level building you see when leaving the town. Um, the flats uh, currently uh, <laughs> obscure the the side elevation particularly i don't know if you've had a look at that one but uh, the side elevation is not the most attractive thing i've ever seen um but it is uh, a good a good building and i'm sure the the absolute the um development and the service provided by the shop will be greatly um enjoyed by local people so i'm uh, i've not a problem with that um, but I'm, I'm absolutely adamant that we must have some architectural investigation on the site and we must determine where, if possible, the old town hall was. Um, this is an absolutely integral part of Tamworth's history and if we miss this opportunity to make some further or to expand our knowledge on Tamworth's former heritage, we will be doing nobody a favour. So I will vote for it, but I will be pushing or hoping that our um, planning officers will be taking great care to ensure that the archaeological remains are properly examined and excavated. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Councillor Harper. Just to be clear, uh, the, the so uh, part of condition four in the report states that the archaeological site work shall thereafter be implemented in full in accordance with the written scheme of archaeological investigation uh, approved under condition A. So yeah, just to be, it, it is part of the conditions. Okay, thank you, Councillor Harper. Is there any more uh, points in the debate to make? Oh, one more from Councillor. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Chair, I was well aware of that, but I just wanted to emphasise the point. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you for emphasising, uh, Councillor Harper. And it, it must have been a good pub in its day because Councillor Good, uh, Goodall went there and he only goes to good pubs. Yeah. <laughs> so, I was using it a long time before Councillor Goodall. <laughs> and I'm, I'm sure you were, Councillor Harper. Um, okay, so... Um, as far as I can see, I think we, we've come to a vote um, on the motion to approve, subject to the conditions listed in the report. Um, can I have a show of hands for that, please? Unanimous, and myself included. Yep. Fantastic. And uh, that concludes our business for tonight. May I say a big thank you to the officers involved in writing the uh, exceptional reports. Uh, may I also uh, hand that uh, thank you out to the committee members for a, a good, lively debate and questions on all of the, uh, all of the art, uh, applications this evening and for being quite gentle with me on my first uh, gig. Um, but uh, th thank you for that. And I, I close the meeting tonight at... Um, Right. Yes, go on. So, so, sorry, before I uh, uh, end, end it, we're just going to have a bit of a clear up on the Heritage Committee point on the previous application. Thank you, Chair. Um, in terms of um, the councillor asked the Chair to um, 
indicate how whether the committee could express support for the reinstatement of the Heritage, of the Heritage Assessment Committee. Essentially, it's, it, it, it's not a motion that we've had notice on. It's not on the agenda. So um, it's really something that if members wanted to support, they, they could do so and pursue it through the normal officer or political channels. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you, Jane. And uh, on that, I will now officially close the meeting at 19.55. Thank you all.